All right, everyone, we're here for another LoRa training video. Actually, we're not. Okay. So if you're not familiar, LoRa or low rank adaptation is a way for you to tell stable diffusion how to create any person, object, or style pretty much by supplying your own images and just fine tuning or training a base model. Now, I've done probably six or seven of these trainings in the past, and every single one of these videos is 20, 30 minutes in length, and it's me just going on about all the different settings you need to adjust and how to install the software, whether it's Koya SS or using Dream Booth and Collab. It doesn't matter. It's all insanely difficult to do, and it takes forever. So I stopped and I wanted to make this way more accessible to everyone. So what I've done is over the past few weeks, I've been designing and building and creating my very own dead simple one click LoRa training system. And that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to jump on over to pixeldojo.ai and click on get started. Now, one of the new menu items you can see over here on the left hand side is train. So we're going to jump down there and we're going to just go over to this LoRa trainer. You can see this opens up a really simple UI where it has a section for you to upload images, create an identifier, caption prefix, and training type. That's all you need, and I'm gonna take you through each of those steps. So the first thing you need to do when you're training Laura is come up with images of what you wanna train. Let's say it's a person or a particular subject. What you can do is you can go over to Google search, you can do an image search, so you could say, for example, Tom Cruise, and you can do a search, go to images, and you can pull back and filter by size and go to large images. And what you wanna do is you wanna pick a whole bunch of images that are just him. You don't want pictures that he has somebody else in the photo with him. You want them to be high quality, close ups, nice cropped shots, and things with different types of lighting, different looks, different apparel, that sort of thing. And you need about six to 10 images. That isn't the only way you can do this though. You could also, for example, come into the create section on Pixel Dojo. You could go to either Stable Diffusion 3, which allows you to create really high quality images or just say AI image creator. You can jump over here and just start typing out a prompt. You could say a brunette European woman. Click on generate and this is gonna start generating some images for you. And in just a few seconds, you've got some images like these that come back. Now you could go through and you pick one that you really enjoy. Let's say this one, for example, you can click on the save button. This is gonna save it over to my images over here on the left hand side. So when you go over here, you'll notice that one of the images that loads up is the one that you just saved. Now. That's great, but how do you get different poses and different lighting, different clothing? Well, I have some tools for that as well. So instead of going to the Create tab, you can go to the Enhance tab. And a couple of the things here that you can do, you can do a style transfer, you could do imagery lighting. So we could go to imagery lighting, for example, and you'll see my images will load up here. So in just a second, this image will load. You can click on it and you can select from one of the presets. So you could say, um, I want to just be on a in the sunny outdoors. So this will go ahead and set all the settings you need. You just click generate, and now it's going to relight this image and have this person in a sunny outdoor environment. And here you can see the results of that. Now we could save one of these images, and that's fantastic. Now we've got two great images of this person, but what about those poses? That's a great question. So if we go back up to create, you can see a couple of different things here. You have consistent characters, you have the character stylist and pose control. So going to consistent characters is probably the easiest. We're gonna click on our original image and we're just gonna click on generate. We're not gonna change any other settings. Again, I've tried to make everything in this system as dead simple as possible. So just a few seconds later, we're gonna have different poses of this same person. And you can see now you've got different poses of the exact same woman. So you can go up here to the top and just say, save all images. You could take one of these, you could relight it, do whatever you want. If you wanna go a step further, you could also do pose control. That allows you to upload a pose image and then just create a character that has that same pose as a reference image you create or you upload. But that's enough of that. It gives you two or three different options about how you can go about creating a character or getting some images to start the LoRa training. So with that out of the way, let's actually get into the meat of this and show you how to train a LoRa. All right, the LoRa trainer is super simple to use. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna go to the upload images. You're gonna create, again, six to 10 images is a good place to start. 
have those on your desktop somewhere, and you can just select all the images, right click, and save as a zip file. They need to be zipped up before you upload them. Choose the file, and then go ahead and click open. That's gonna load it right here, so you can see Pixel Dojo 6452.zip. That has my 10 images in it. Next up is the identifier. Now this is the token that's used when you generate images later. So this is a unique identifier that identifies your particular subject or character inside of the LoRa. So you can go with the default talk. I like to give it something that's a little bit more descriptive, uh, just so I remember when I create multiple different LoRas, what it is. So you could say talk on you, for example, just something that you'll remember later. Now, the caption prefix, this is going to go through blip captioning. What that does is it uses an AI model to look at all of the images that you've uploaded, and it's going to create captions of what's in that image. So this person's wearing a blue shirt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what you want to do is have a prefix on those, so every single one of the images is going to have your identifier. So you could say a photo of talk on you, and then you're going to select the training type. Now, as I said, you can do either a person, object, or style. So if you want to do a person in this case, just leave it on person. This is going to do some really cool stuff in the background. Now, I've trained probably 30 different LoRa's with this system, so I know exactly how it works on the back end. It changes a bunch of settings depending on the type that you select, and my presets and defaults are pretty dialed in so you should get some good quality images. Now when you select person, for example, it's going to automatically crop all of your images to give you a nice area just around the face so that it's going to look as good as possible. So you don't have to pre-crop your images like you've seen in some videos. This all handles all that in the background for you. Once you've got that done, it's really that simple. You just click on start training. You're going to wait a second. What it's doing is it's uploading your zip file and it's uploading it to a temporary directory. This gets cleared out every 24 hours. I don't want any of your training data. I don't store any of it or keep any of it. It's just temporary so that we can run the training, then it gets deleted. Now you can see starting training, do not close this window, and then you'll see a progress bar. And right now what it's doing during this step is it's uploading your images and then it's taking each one of them and doing that blip captioning. So it takes just a minute. And once that's done, you'll get a nice notice down here at the bottom that tells you that it's processing the LoRa. And here's that message now. You can see the progress bar, training in progress. It usually takes about 10 minutes. Yes, that's significantly faster than all the other systems. So if you go to Colab, you remember it takes about an hour. And this is an SDXL LoRa, so it's a high quality 1024 by 1024 LoRa. Now, on your own home computer, even though I had an RTX 3090, it would take five, six, up to 12 hours in order for that to complete. That's because on the back end, I'm running an NVIDIA A100 80 gigabyte GPU. So this is a really powerful system that's able to train these LoRa models super fast. While this is going, you can go get a cup of coffee or drink of water or something, then come back. Don't close the window though. This does need to be open while it's training. At the end of the training, you get this message. Training succeeded, your model will be ready in a moment. What it's doing now is it's saving the model to the file system and then it's gonna give you a couple of options. As you can see here, you can either save the model, you can download it to your computer, so you can download this and use it in Automatic 11.11 or Focus or any other system that you so choose. You can also go to View in My Training. So we'll go ahead and do that now. View in My Trainings, you can see it takes you to the My Laura's page, and you can see I've got one over here that already has an image associated with it, and then we've got the one that we just trained, and there's no image with it because we haven't generated any. So let's go over to the Laura Image Creator. When we click on that, you'll notice down here at the bottom, it automatically loads all the Laura's that you've pre-trained in the past. So here's the brand new one that we just created, Takania. And you can see when you click on it, it automatically says at the top, a photo of Tonkania. So it's already pre-filling everything that you need. It's loading the LoRa, everything else. And you've got this negative prompt in here too. All you have to do is click on generate and it's gonna start generating images with Stable Diffusion XL using your LoRa. And here we have our first four images created with our very own LoRa model. And one of the things I've noticed about Stable Diffusion, Stable Diffusion XL, is sometimes the facial details aren't quite as high a quality as I would like. So you might have an image, 
like this first one that's pretty good, but we can go ahead and save this and make it even better. So we're gonna click on the save button that saved it to my images, but we have a whole bunch of other tools that we can use here too. So we can go over to enhance and we can click on the face enhancer. You'll notice one of the images that pops up is the one that we just saved that was trained by our Laura. We can click on that. It's gonna load it up in the face enhancer. Again, the preset settings are already pretty great, so we can just click on fix it. This is gonna automatically run an AI model that refines the face. And I'll show you what that looks like here. And here you can see what I'm talking about. If you look at the before and after, what a difference with the facial feature quality. Just look at the lips, at the mouth, at the eyes, the eyebrows, even the cheekbones and the facial structure. The hair is better quality, pretty much everything across the board. Uh, if you're happy with this image, you can click here down at the bottom. You can either download it by clicking the button on the left, or you can save it clicking the button on the right. You'll notice it also upscaled it, so it's upscaled 2x from what it was before. You could go further, you could drop it into the creative upscaler and take it even a step further. Or you can simply go over to my images and you can click on to filter the face enhance. And you can see this brand new image that we just saved there. Now from there, let's say you wanted to share this with the world. If you didn't download it, and save it to your computer. You can also share it with the world. See this button in the bottom right hand corner? By default, this is checked off, it's gray. That means that this is a private image. You can also make any of your images public by simply clicking on that. It turns blue, that means it's public. That means it's in the community gallery for all to see. So if we go over to the community gallery, we go to the face enhancer tab, we can see that these will start loading up. And here's the image that we just saved with a face enhancer. Everybody can come to this URL. So you can share this with friends and family. You can share it to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, anywhere else you want. And it's still got that slider so they can see the before and after images. You'll also notice that I use artificial intelligence to come up with not only a title for the image, but also a description of the image as well, which I thought was a pretty cool touch. And that's it. There is so much more that I could go into with Pixel Dojo and all the different options and tools and features that you have. I've been adding things about every other day, to be honest. I'm really just grinding out, trying to make this the most useful tool out there. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'd love to see what you end up making. Share your links from the community gallery with me. I wanna check them out. As always, I'm Brian. This is All Your Tech AI. Thank you so much. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All Your Tech AI, earning the renown.